So today's class, we are uh, working on project progress and performance measurement and evaluation. That is chapter 13, Larson and Gray book. And let's do it. So we start with the, the, the scope, WBS, lowest level subdeliverable, work package. Then we move those uh, deliverables, subdeliverables, the activities to the MS project, prepare the activity list estimate the duration, identify predecessors, then we move to the project network, then we elaborate the Gantt chart, and then the time phase budget. That is the planning process group according to the PMI. Today, we are focused on monitoring control. And let's dig a little bit deeper and understand what is monitor and control. Monitor and control are have four major elements monitor is to observe observe okay when i call monitor you are observing people doing the work you are collecting information about the work done okay about the work. that's monitor so one thing is collect information the second thing is, is compare that co that information that is collect do of the execution of the work done and compare that with the planning with the project plan and here we are looking or variance. What is a variance? A variance is the difference between the work that was executed, is the executed minus planning. Okay, that is what you call variance. If we don't have a variance, everything is okay. If we, we do have variance, and depend on the level of variance. We need to act, and that is the control. Sometimes you, you, you don't have to do anything, so do nothing because everything is okay. Sometimes you have to correct things. Okay, that is the function of controlling. And a, a critical moment for project managers doing monitoring control is to prepare reports. And there is one type of report that is called status report project status report that probably will have a huge influence in the project success. So during the project planning, we have to do what the budget of the project. The budget is a itemized list of estimate expenses need to complete the work. And here we have two key points, expense, and the work so we have in the budget we attach expense to the work and that is important to understand we have the plan cost i mean that the estimate cost and the work that's very that's very important to keep that in mind so how much things the work is going to cost it's going to that is future and you'll be, and this is estimate. It's not a real thing. It doesn't expect that the project will always follow the estimate. Probably not. And actually, um, most of the time, the project will not follow the estimate. Okay, but is is and, and there is a question that some people may ask me. Well, so why do you need to plan for the project? Why? What do you think? If I'm telling you that uh, your estimates the reality will be different so you need the goals and objectives yes but mainly because you don't want to uh make a mistake of 600 percent you you want to keep the mistake under 10 20 percent that's why you need so the estimate will be not exact but at least you have a better direction and the execution if you do the plan well, we'll be close to the plan. We'll be not, if you don't do any plan, you may have 600%. So you estimate $1,000 and go there and you, uh, the cost, uh, the, the real cost will be $10,000. But if you do the plan, you plan $1,000, but then the real cost will be $1,200, okay? $1,200, something like that. Okay, That's why we do this. Okay, we do the, uh, one of ways of doing that, is doing the bottom-up approach, parametric approach. We studied that at the beginning of chapter 
five. So you go from the cost and duration of each task, lowest level deliverable, the work package, is going up until you have the cost and time for the whole project. That is what you do. How that reflects on the budget. So you have each task of the lowest level subdeliverable, you have to understand that task and the cost uh, for each task. So that is the budget. And after doing that, we need to place the expense throughout the project frame, uh, time frame. So, and we go for, you have the gun chart from the scheduling plan, and you have the time phase budget. And so you, we just put the expense related to activity during the time you are executing the activity. So if you have one activity here, that's the expense for that activity. And that will be uh, when you, you are expecting, the project manager is expecting to incur on those expenses, pay those bills, okay? Use that money. So that's very important when you do the planning. So everything here represents two things, the time and the money. So that's why cost baseline or time phase budget are so critical in the project planning because that time phase budget consolidates the time from the gun chart from the scheduling plus the budget put two things together in a simple in a simple uh uh table okay that's very important so everything that we do, you, and that cost baseline is, or time phase, but it's the main um, resource or input for monitoring and controlling the project, okay? Because it consolidates time and the budget. So that's a beautiful time phase budget. And everything that we'll be doing here in terms of monitoring and controlling, we will be collecting information from the time phase budget. Because here, let's take the one activity here, design. You know that design will be executed February, March, and, it, and you have $5,000 of expenses in February, $3,000 in March. So you know that there is amount of work that should be done in February of $5,000, $5, uh, like say, so you have $5,000 of work be done in February. In March, you have $3,000 of work to be executed in March. Okay, so time phase budget is the main input for uh, project monitoring control. Of course, because if you think about gun chart is here, uh, the budget is here, project budget is here, but that is the main uh, uh, report that you may use for the project uh, control monitor the project. Okay, when you finish the plan, after the time phase budget, you finish the plan, maybe two weeks later, one month later, you start the execution. You start doing the execution. And, and, and now that you have the plan, when you start the execution, you have to create a, a system that allows you to collect data. Because as a project manager, you don't know what's happening in the field. In some projects you can, you can observe like, uh, but in big projects, you, you, your contact with the person that is executing the task is very low. You don't see it. Sometimes it's in another city, in another province. It's not the same. So, so you have to collect that data from the execution. What is the data from the execution? Time spent on the task. You need to know how the time is spent on the task. You as a project manager know the plan, you know, what is the estimates, what you are expecting, but you need to get, and you, you just know that if you contact the person that is in charge for that task, okay? Another thing is the actual cost. You estimate, like say, that design activity in that, uh, in that work, uh, that project, the estimated cost $5,000. But when they start, the person that is in you start spending money, you don't know if he, he, the person has spent uh, $5,000 or 
So the same thing you estimate. Maybe the person has spent six thousand dollars. Maybe five, four thousand. You don't know. You have to collect that data. And to collect the data, of course, the major, major uh, element is to know who is the person. And that's why you need to have a good race, at least a good list of project team with emails, telephone numbers, uh, contact information, and know who is the executor and who is the manager for that executive accountable person. It's important because if the guy doesn't answer your questions, you go to the manager. Okay, so that's important to understand. And how you'll be analyzing that data that you collect from the field, you'll be comparing that with the information that you have on the time phase budget. Okay, time phase budget. That is the main main thing that we need to understand. So we are now put your mind. You have to some, somehow uh, forget your planning activities. You are not planning the project anymore. So most of the things that you have done so far in the planning was done maybe two weeks ago, one month ago, and now you are in the middle of the execution. And that is the job, I would say, that you'll be doing routinely every day in your life. Because 80% of the time, you'll be contacting people, understand, collecting data, and that is every day. Compare with your time phase budget, take some conclusion, discuss some, some actions to correct the, the project. So that is the job that you'll be doing 80% of the time. Everything that you are studying in this semester is just 20% of your time as a project manager. Planning should be less than 20% actually, if possible. And that is a critical thing if you want to get your project have success. How to report the progress. Because how the project manager report the project, that guide the team. That influence the decision makers, like managers and executives. So how you'll be reporting the information from the project will help you to solve things or not. Okay? That's very, very, very important. So let's let's see uh, what I am explaining in a in a, uh, in a different perspective. That is the current report. You are here to take that as a timeline. So you have you been a shopping center and that uh, that you are here. Okay. You are here and. What's happened? You have done the planning some time ago, okay? You have done the planning. Maybe two months ago, four weeks ago, five weeks ago. And now you are executing. So, and your project is going week by week, month by month. So, if you are here, you look have to look back and you have to collect information from collect execution data time spent and actual cost. Because you have to collect, and this you have to contact the executor, the managers, uh, If you have to call or ask them, send them emails or in meetings or whatever, but you have to collect those information. And what do you do with that information? You compare with the planning and you issue a status report, project status report. That is the main thing that you have to do, okay? Issue that project status report. And that project start report, we will be talking about the consequences of the variance here moving forward. If someone is late, you have to, what is the consequence of that task that is late? If someone spent more money than the budget, what are the consequences for the project? So as a, as a project manager, one job that you have to do every week, and that is, is to issue a status report. Every week, every week in your life, as project manager, you have to issue a status report. Okay? And usually that, that's why you, you'll be spending most of the time, 
again around 80 percent or more of your time 80 percent or more of your time here doing that that type of work for simple projects you can track the performance using what is called tracking gun chart actually even for you can get that from uh, ms project as well but this you you have just uh you can visualize the work execution you, you, you don't have information about costs just about the execution so let's suppose that you have uh, uh here let's put him was the planning okay that was the planning so that's the way you you, you plan task a b c and in red is the execution it means that task a was planned to be executed up to day two and it was executed the blue means the planning and the red means the execution task c it means that should you plan to execute the tasks b sorry b from day two to day five and you execute the task task c is different can you see task c what's happened to task c it took less time than expected yes exactly because you was exp during the planning you saw that you, you would be from day two to day six but for some reason the guys there execute the task in three days instead of four now you have if you are here that's today what's happened to task d how can i interpret that situation of task d it started you 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 plan to execute in three days somehow you are after the first day you come back and talk to the person in charge for the task and that person maybe has told you that he's late and you may one thing that we always ask is oh, what have you done and the second question is always being how long do you think will take to complete the task and probably the person told you three days we work hard to help you to get better marks be prepared for job interviews and excel in work meetings you can send your questions in the comment area below i will be pleased to answer all of them thanks for watching don't forget to subscribe to Americo e-learning.